January 871, on the field of Ashdown in Berkshire, King Ethelred of Wessex and his younger brother and designated heir Alfred went on the offensive against a marauding branch of the Viking Great Heathen Army, led by the warlords Halfdan and Baxkeg. Together, the two Vikings had been rampaging around Wessex for some weeks, rampaging and looting in preparation for an eventual overthrow of the last Anglo-Saxon kingdom. The West Saxon force split into two, with Alfred marching his contingent towards the enemy and taking the full brunt of the Viking attack. The fighting was bloody, but by the day's end, Baxkeg lay dead, and the West Saxons emerged victorious. They had little to celebrate, however, as Halfdan and much of his army remained very much at large within the fortified walls of Reading. Rallying together his remaining forces, Halfdan sallied forth just days later to defeat the West Saxons at the Battle of Basing in 871. The victory was not decisive, and another engagement was fought two months later at Marton. In the aftermath of the Battle of Marton, Ethelred died, possibly as a result of injuries inflicted during the fighting, and Alfred, the hero of Ashdown, was subsequently crowned as the new King of Wessex. It was then, just as Halfdan and his army celebrated their recent victories, and Ethelred's corpse headed towards the family mausoleum at Winborn, that West Saxon scouts reported new, devastating news to Alfred. A fresh, new Viking fleet, filled with axe-wielding raiders from beyond the sea, had sailed up the Thames to arrive at Reading. It's unclear whether this great summer army was newly arrived into Britain, or whether they had simply come from the newly conquered lands to the east. But on board were thousands of fresh warriors eager for plunder and land. Chief amongst them was a renowned pagan sea king who had spent a lifetime raiding all over the known world. His name was Guthra, and he would eventually go on to become Alfred's greatest adversary in his 28 year long struggle with the Vikings. Like most information about the warriors and leaders of the vast Viking invasion force known as the Great Heathen Army, little concrete evidence remains of Guthrum or any of his contemporaries before they came to Britain. We can surmise that like much of the leadership of the army, he was a Dane, although even this much remains shrouded in mystery. It seems likely that like most of the foremost Viking leaders of the age, Guthrum had originally been a minor landless noble, who had been forced to head overseas in order to make a life and a name for himself. In true Viking fashion, he very likely achieved this by hacking his way through anyone and anything he came up against, eventually amassing a large force of eager and ambitious warriors around him. It was a coalition of like-minded leaders, such as Guthrum, that had originally come together to invade the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms in 865. Prior to this date, Viking raids had been common all over Europe, although they seemed to have been generally smaller in scale than the Great Heathen Army and were generally made up of single leaders rather than confederations of warlords. It immediately became apparent that this invasion was different, although it still remains unclear whether Guthrum had been a part of the original invasion force, said to have been led by Ivar the Boneless, Uber and Halfdan, allegedly three sons of the legendary figure Ragnar Lothbrok. By 871, six years into the invasion, after successfully conquering the kingdoms of Northumbria and East Anglia, Ivar decided to head on over to Ireland, where he probably originated from, and much of the leadership of the army seems to have fallen to Halfdan. Though always eager for conquest, Vikings were always pragmatic and shrewd above all else. Thus, when Alfred used the very last trick he had, and offered vast sums of money to pay off Halfdan's force, now bolstered by Guthrum's newcomers, the Vikings accepted. This seems to have also coincided with a period of instability in Francia, it seems likely that some of Halfdan and Guthrum's forces may have headed there over the channel to try their luck against the Franks. Other portions of the armies likely headed north to Mercia and Northumbria to cement the growing Viking hold over their new acquisitions and to extort as much as they could from the locals. All the while, Alfred desperately strengthened his defences and trained his forces for the inevitable invasion which he knew would later come. By 875, Halfdan and Guthrum finally parted ways after four years of successfully extorting as much cash and plunder as they could from Britain. Halfdan went north to assume the kingship in Northumbria after the Vikings there decided to finally get rid of their English puppet ruler. Guthrum on the other hand, who apparently hadn't engaged in as much conquest in Britain as the sons of Lothbrok had, still had war on his mind and unfinished business with the extremely rich West Saxon king. First he travelled to East Anglia, 
where he stayed for around a year or so whilst more and more dragon ships sailed into the myriad riverways of the east to bolster his already formidable forces. Once he was finally ready to go to war, Guthrum sailed his forces south around the coast to raid the shores of Wessex, apparently linking up with yet another Viking army already active in the area and forcing Alfred onto the defensive. Almost as soon as he arrived on the scene, Guthrum won an initial encounter with Alfred in Dorset and successfully captured the stronghold of Wareham. A peace was finally brokered with unknown terms, although within a matter of weeks, Guthrum apparently went back on his word and led his now rested force deep into Wessex on horseback, pillaging and raiding at will. A number of skirmishes followed, with Alfred repeatedly unable to defeat the invaders. Soon enough, Guthrum captured Exeter, and yet another peace treaty was made, with Alfred likely stalling for time once again in a desperate attempt to rally enough forces together to defeat the Viking horde ravaging his kingdom. On the 6th of January 878, in the midst of the weeks-long Christian festival that Saxons always traditionally adhered to, Guthrum, possibly with the support of some treacherous Saxon eldermen, launched a catastrophic surprise attack upon Alfred's court at Chippenham. Alfred barely escaped with his life into the marshlands of Somerset, with just a handful of followers, whilst Guthrum sent his outriders in swift pursuit to find and kill the elusive king. During the next few months, Guthrum stood on the very brink of becoming king in not just East Anglia and parts of Mercia, but Wessex too, previously the richest and most powerful of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. By May of that year, however, in one of the most miraculous turnarounds in all of history, Alfred somehow managed to rally together the last remnants of his forces and called up the peasantry from the last remaining counties not overrun by Northmen, and they engaged Guthrum head-on at Eddington in Wiltshire for one last definitive battle, generally regarded as one of the most decisive in all of English history. Eddington ensured the survival of Alfred's kingdom and is likely the very reason why England is not called Daneland today. Guthrum's army was routed entirely and he was apparently so shocked and impressed by the sudden turnaround that he agreed to convert to Christianity with Alfred as his godfather. Guthrum, once the scourge of the high seas from Sweden to Spain, lived out the last 12 years of his life in peace and prosperity, now under the Christian name Athelstan, as the first king of Danish East Anglia 